Yep, Charlemagne the God. Hold on. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I have to prepare myself. I have to prepare myself. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. Schultz was putting me on the uh, who that Jelly Anthony, Roll, bro. Oliver Anthony. Oh, I yeah. said that was Jelly Roll. No, that's Wango. Wango, that's his name. White Django, that's what we call him. White Django. That's Wango. Oliver Anthony taking over the country charts. Country music. White Soul is back. Salute the big. Uh, salute the Wango. It's really one of these things that she's trying to rile me up even in the beginning. We didn't even get five minutes in the episode for she's trying to rile me up. I mean, for what? She's always trying to rile like, me up. why? She gets me all riled up, and then she gets angry at me that I'm riled up at her. <laughs> How was your week? It was great until 20 seconds ago when <laughs> Taylor started riling me up again. Did I tell you I met Jelly Roll? I hope so. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing now? <laughs> Tell me. Come on now. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you laughing? Yeah. Come on. What are you doing no, now? I just met Jelly Roll. Where'd you man. meet him? He was uh he was at the radio station. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was at the radio station. And why are you laughing? I, I just like I knocked Jelly, Jelly Roll cool. <laughs> He's the coolest Dude, motherfucker on the cool? planet, but you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I I know the joke, but I'm not gonna act like I know the joke. Wait, do you work with do you work with Jelly Roll every day or what? what, what, what y'all yeah, fuck y'all yeah, really don't fuck. y'all me no it's y'all don't tell me because you he keeping fucking, it going he right he tries to rile me up but you keeping it going but he tries to rile me up every single time too no, both I of y'all rile man. me up every day no, we don't, I come in man. here. Peaceful. I took a nice deep breath before the podcast you did, started. You did, you did, you did, you did. I tried to get my breath. chakras right, and you round me up, and you round I, but me But that's up. how Taylor makes people feel. I tell her that all the time. That's why I be lighting candles and shit at the station, doing the final time. People be like, why are you doing this? I say, because of Taylor, because yeah. of her. Yeah, you got I my fucking I don't even be in the studio. High. You Yo, don't even be seeing She's the reason right? why you're calcified. This what, <laughs> she's the reason why you're On the way here, Taylor said some shit to me, right? And I Here said, you're just saying this you're to me because you, you, you want me to say it on the podcast. I know this was a No, okay. you made like, it oh, up. Oh, oh, oh. Like, Good idea. She's like, I'm going to Tampa. I said, oh, word. She's like, no, first of all, I got to leave the podcast early. I said, oh, word, why? I got to go to LaGuardia. No, I said, where you going? She goes, LaGuardia. I said, yeah, but where you going? Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> and she goes, Tampa. And I go, oh, what's in Tampa? Beyonce. Are you going all the way to Tampa to see Beyonce? She's like, oh, yeah, me and my friend Taylor. Taylor don't exist. Yes, she does. Yo, you sound crazy. You going alone to Beyonce, yo? Taylor you guys exist. sound crazy. She's been telling us about this person, Taylor, who's supposed to be I have best several friend. pictures of Taylor. If you go on my IG, I'm sure fun you do. underscore You should T. have several pictures of Taylor on Taylor's You're IG. You're so annoying. What, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Right? This person doesn't exist, but she's going all the way to oh, Tampa to see Beyonce mm. to hang with Taylor, mm. her imaginary friend. What you need to do is go to Taylor Swift. That's what you need to do. Mm. That's what you need I'm to go okay to Taylor Swift. I'm, okay. I'm just saying, I went to Taylor, by the you way. You saw Taylor? It's the greatest live concert I've ever seen in my really? life. The Y'all only person you can compare Taylor Swift to is Michael Jackson. Really? Stop. There's nobody else. It is you're doing a disrespect and a disservice to any other artist if you compare Taylor Swift to them. I'm being honest with you. I know there's a lot of cops. I know, you know. You know. You know. Come on, son. You already know. You already know. Come on, bro. Come on. Oh, you think you're the only one that can rile? Yo, yo, you think you're the only one that can rile? Let me tell you something. <laughs> Listen, Taylor Swift. I heard we, it's amazing, though. Oh! I heard it's like a stage play. I did hear that shit. It is the most amazing live concert I've ever seen. Really? It's not, it's not even close. The only person you and can you've seen Beyonce. To, no, son, yeah. I've seen Beyonce. No, you haven't. I've seen Beyonce. I've seen Beyonce. But here's the thing. There's the thing. There's no question Beyonce is a a much better dancer. There's no question that much uh, better singer. She's a much better singer. There's no question. Beyonce is a generational talent. It's it's a a talent like Beyonce does not come along. What I'm what I'm trying to say is you're doing a disservice to Beyonce to compare her to Taylor Swift. Because Taylor is in another galaxy. Yeah, Yeah. you know, yo, all jokes aside. I, 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 I and I mean this. And this is gonna hurt feelings here, but I don't even like comparing them because Beyonce is, you get that once in a generation, maybe once in a century, you get a Beyonce, right? Absolutely. So I, I hate the comparison, it sucks we have to compare them, but she's not even, 
it's not even. Salute to my Taylor, boy. Taylor Swift put out so, like, you don't realize when you sit there, I was a Taylor hater. I'm going there because my wife wants to go, and I'm like, I've been making fun of this girl for a decade. I've been hating on her. I felt like such a phony. Within one song, I'm standing up. I knew you were trouble, trouble when you walked, walked in. <laughs> Listen, I'm, salute to my boy Frosty, man. Frosty listened to the last episode of Brilliant News, and he texted me. Uh, uh, of a news report of how it said Beyonce's tour is going to gross $500 million. It's like the highest grossing R&B tour ever. Say R&B, though. Put, make that loud. And I go... Make that loud. And I, and I text him back and I go, well, Taylor's estimated to gross like $1.4 billion. Like, like they're saying Beyonce's whole tour is going to be $500 million, but she's already like at $400 million now. Like shows done. Like with, I think it was within 22 shows, she was over $300 million. Number one highest grossing tour of the year so far. And Frosty's going back and forth. I mean, I go, Frost, I want to be right about this, right? <laughs> but the reality is when we're talking about just the numbers wise, yeah. Taylor smoking not, shit. For, and forget, forget. It's, She's it's, smoking it's shit. It's not even numbers. Like, you're looking at this tour. The person who does the I stage. I read that article, too. The person who does the stage design is also the Taylor Swift the ta stage design. Yeah. The person that does the choreography. Bro, She's like generous. She is a new person on the tour. She takes a moment to shout them out. Hey, here's a new guitarist. Here's a new pianist. Give it up for them. <laughs> Play this is piano. my new penis. You, y'all are horrible, bro. <laughs> you and you. What it, you didn't. Both of y'all fell for it. Immediately, you said penis. <laughs> So, <laughs> Beyonce shouts out people in the crowd though. That's yeah. bigger. Yeah. Oh, Taylor got people in the crowd. Yeah, she be shouting out like people in the front, like shout out, like yo, shout out to Andrew, yeah. bro. Like, shout out to me though. But, but Taylor, yeah. Taylor gave fifty five million dollars in bonuses. I don't care if she's even doing this so people go look how sweet Taylor is. It's still a hundred thousand to your bus driver, a hundred thousand yeah, to yeah, the light yeah, guy, a yeah, yeah, hundred thousand. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't realize it. I've been someone who's hated on Taylor. But, I went in there not thinking I was gonna be blown away, and it was. Spectacular. Now, now, this is something interesting, though, because they're saying I, re I read one report. I hate we got that we have to compare him. It's unfair to Beyonce. But, you can't compare. But check it the out. The only person you can compare Taylor to is Michael Jackson, and I'm telling you, and 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 if if I'm being honest, it's Michael Jackson. This is the only person you can compare her to if you talk about hits. And I'm telling, and I listen. I don't want to do this, but we could do it. I don't want to do this. We could do it. You can't tell me Beyonce has the same amount of hits, no features, as Taylor. She does. She yes. got... No, no. no. Take yeah, away does. the features, you can't even name them. No, nah, she does. Take away the features, you can't even name them. Beyonce don't have a lot of features, though. Take away the features, you can't name 10 Beyonce what songs. features, though? 10 Beyonce songs without the features, go. Wait, are you talking about no Destiny's Child? What do you mean by no, no features? No Destiny's Child, no Jay-Z, no Sean DePaul. Oh, geez. okay. Yo, 10, 10. Oh, you mean with nobody? No features! Oh, that's not. Why we act like no, we don't no, 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 features no, no, no. on? She got those. Love on Top, Single Ladies. Wait, wait, Single Ladies with Destiny's Child, right? No, 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 no that's no, her. No, Love that's on Top, that. Single oh. Ladies, uh, Ring the Alarm, Halo. Uh, it's a bunch of them. That's four, not a bunch. I, I mean, I, I can't. I'm it's just saying, Taylor got the four, 12 albums no, no it's, a, it's a bunch of them without features, though. What do you um, mean we don't know? I could play any Taylor song right now. You know, you don't even know. Um, hold up. They don't love me like I love you. That's a bunch of them. Yeah, that's right. Irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. These are not, these are great songs, but these are not shut down 100,000 Oh, yes, they are. are. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, it, listen, you guys. You must not guys, know about me. You, you must, must not, not know, know about me. me. But also, here's the interesting uh, thing, right? Uh, They're saying Beyonce's uh, tour, that one article came out. It's said, unfair to Beyonce what y'all are doing. They said, really, they, why can't we just appreciate her? In her greatness. Listen, they said one article, they, one article said she's, it's, it's, the, the, the tour is gonna make 500 million altogether. Yeah. But this New York Times article that came out two days ago said that Eras, which is Taylor's tour, could top 1 billion in sales, making it the first concert in history to cross that mark. But some estimates suggest that Beyonce's world tour could gross even more than that by the time it wraps in October. I don't know what's true and what's not true. I hope they both make all the money. I don't even care about it. I don't care about the money. What I'm saying is this poor girl, Taylor Swift, has been, has received a million times more criticism than Beyonce. It's, whoever hates Beyonce? Beyonce is unanimously loved, appreciated, and adored. No, I, I, I agree with that because I don't like Taylor now and I have no reason not to No like her. reason to not like her. It is constant hate and this girl You know what is, I don't like? I don't like how she acts fake surprise at award shows. Yeah. So here's the thing. Like you know you was going to win. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. I didn't like that either and I specifically commented on it. When you see her live, 
That shit feels authentic. And I don't know, son, you know me. I'm she walks awesome. out to the crowd and goes, oh my God. Yeah, come on. Y'all are here for me? Who else would we be here for, Taylor? Hands on my knees on my costume, <laughs> bro. I was clapping like this at Taylor, bro. That's not happening. How, how do you act surprised at your own show yeah, that people right. are there to see you? Come on, show. Come on, come show. On. You get caught up in it. I was caught up in it, bro. <laughs> it's a cult, bro. It's a cult. I was caught up in it. You never experienced something like this. 100,000 people? Bro, she said to the people at the top of the thing, jump off, 10,000 people would have jumped off right now. Beyonce tells the crowd to be quiet and yes, everybody right. shuts the fuck up. Who, who, who talks time. when a black woman says be quiet? <laughs> what is the argument here though? What are we arguing? Y'all are arguing. I'm not arguing. You I'm need to see Beyonce's show. That's what it. I hate you is that y'all even it. bring Beyonce into it. What I'm trying to say is y'all need to just compare Taylor Swift to Michael Jackson and it's close. <laughs> I just want to let you know it's close. <laughs> I, I just want to let you know, it's very close, <laughs> bro. It's ve- if you really do it back this to back. It's crazy. If Taylor Swift could moonwalk, we wouldn't even talk about Michael Jackson. I'm so sick of Taylor. If Katie. Taylor Swift could moonwalk, we wouldn't even talk about Michael Jackson. I'm right. so sick of Taylor using Twitter as a search engine. Why? Why do you do this? Look at that. You know what's kind of crazy though? Michael was looking like Taylor Swift in his final form, like right before, <laughs> like right before he Can passed I be away. Right Can before I be he passed away, <laughs> Michael and Taylor had a lot of similarities. Because he knew man. who the goat was. Because <laughs> even Michael Jackson knew who the goat was. <laughs> even Michael Jackson knew who the greatest of all time was. Greatest of all, Taylor. I haven't seen the show. I Look at her going crazy. Look at these girls going crazy. You never seen women go crazy like this. Yes. You have not. Beyonce shows are like this. Yeah, yeah it's right. Like it. Bro. Gay guys. It doesn't like gay guys. Yeah, 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 dude, yes. She got all the gay dudes. <laughs> gay dudes. Straight dudes. <laughs> Dads. <laughs> children. Yo, let me ask you a question. At Beyonce shows, do they have 3,000 people outside the arena oh, yeah. singing? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, tail, like a tailgate? Yes. Yo, Beyonce had to sell, at one of her shows, she had to sell listening only seats. So you were paying like $300 just to hear. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Like, but by the way, what Beyonce and Taylor are doing for the, the economy this summer oh, is unbelievable. I right hate now. that we compare them. Why can't Beyonce be the fucking greatest artist of her generation? You're the one comparing them. I'm comparing her to Michael Jackson. <laughs> Y'all keep bringing in Beyonce. I said, Taylor, the only person you compare is to Michael Jackson. You're like, have you seen Beyonce? I'm not even bringing up Beyonce. I'm bringing up Michael Jackson and then R. Kelly. Why does that sound so funny? Only R. Kelly and Michael Jackson I can know. be compared to Taylor Swift. Nah. And if rap was good live, which is not, it's it's the worst uh, genre of music live, it would be Kanye West. No, Kanye's shows are phenomenal. He's the only one. Um, no, no, Drake's show is great too, but it's so hard to make a rap I get what you're saying. I get what you're it's saying. So hard. It's Ka- so Ka- hard. Kanye is the one who, you either have to be already physically, it's almost like, uh, that's a great, uh, this is a great conversation. You know how there's certain comedians who are physical comedians? Yeah. To me, DMX, Busta I was Rhymes, about to say that. DMX, were physical, Busta. animated performers. Yeah, they can get as you going. As far as like giving you a great show, yeah, Kanye's by far. Bro, the by far. Rap the music best. is just the best to like vibe to, bob to, drive to. It just fucking gets you charged up. It's amazing. But the concert, the way I look at it is, if it don't work in karaoke, it's not gonna work in a concert. So, for example, when you see someone sing karaoke, if they got a great voice and they're singing Britney Spears' Toxic, it don't matter. If they're singing Halo, it shuts the room down. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, one yeah. motherfucker goes up there and they sing Eminem's 8 Mile and you're like, wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody come to karaoke for Knees Week spaghetti. Oh, <laughs> sweet Knees sp- Unless there's something there, right? Like, you would have to have, like, a, a head come out on stage and throw up the spaghetti. You know what I mean? Like, Fire. something. Like, I get what you're saying. It's just a harder genre to communicate live. So it's Taylor, <laughs> Michael Jackson. And Boosie is what you said. And Boosie. Okay, okay. Wipe it down. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe it down. Come on. Because <laughs> he's country, bro. He's <laughs> from Louisiana. <laughs> Boosie is crunchy. Boosie was wild and saying R. Kelly could beat Michael Jackson in the verses, though. Like, it's not even close. Like, R. Kelly is a person who put out a lot of quantity, not a lot of quality, bro. That's a hot take. Bro. It's really not a hot take, man. You know, because mm. there was a time after R. Kelly's, you know, scandal and everything happened, he was just working with any and everybody. Do you think he was putting out the songs too early? 
<laughs> like if you, if you let the song for a little bit more, you think the song should have been better? <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. I do. If just, I actually do. I feel like he was just throwing too much music out, yeah. and it was just a little premature. I really do. I really truly do. Should have let the songs age a little bit. Yeah. Why? But, why do they do that? Why are there some people that just? He can't help himself. Yeah. But Michael's hits, man. Because to that point, Michael's hits are mature. Yep. Yes. Michael's hits have been around for a long time. Because when we talk about Michael and R. Kelly in a versus, you gotta you talking about the Jackson Five. No, no features. We don't do features, bro. Nah, in verses you could do features. You could do no, no. features in verses. Oh, oh, we're talking about an actual verses yeah. versus. Yeah. Rules. yeah. And Michael was the lead singer on a lot of those songs. And you're talking about the Jackson Five. You're talking about off the wall album. You're talking about thriller. You're talking about bad. But, 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 in we, verses we, you can play songs you wrote and produced. Michael still smokes some verses. Let's, Michael Jackson. R. R Kelly wrote for a lot. And my, uh, of people, R Name a record R. Kelly got that's on the level of Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Name a, a record R. Kelly wrote or did we on the level this. of I'm gonna be I want to rock with you. We went through this. We went through Michael Jackson's discography because we were having that conversation, mm -hmm. the very normal conversation, Taylor and Michael. And the album Thriller alone. <laughs> Is insane. And Off the Wall is better than Thriller. Off the Wall is crazy. Mm. What are we doing? Also, he has D side. We're not talking about B sides. D side, random, like butterflies. Just random. Remember song. the time? Woo! Mm. <laughs> like, and like, Taylor still like, got him. That's, the, that's how great Taylor is. Smooth criminal, beat it. Go to the Taylor's. way you make me feel. Go to you are not alone. You are man not in the mirror, alone. Billie Jean. You rock my world. I am here Come on, you. man. PYT. You don't even know the song because it's not Taylor. If it was Taylor, I would have known that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Get up, Taylor shit. Just, just look at. Why are you so upset at Taylor? Like we did this already. We did not. Taylor Swift can't fuck with Michael Jackson, bro. No, no, no. She's just the closest. Yeah, and look, looks wise, Yo. they both look like skinny ass. You know what I mean? Skinny Come ass on, white son. women. Come on. <laughs> like, Come on. Son. Come on. Son. I don't know none of these songs. Bad. Oh, I, I, I do know bad, bad blood. blood. I know bad blood. Bad I know bad blood. blood. I knew you were trouble, trouble when, when you walked, walked in. in. That's her most fire slap. That got to be her last song she did. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off fire. Shake it off fire. Shake it off fire. She got like, bangers. Shake it off fire. Shake it off fire. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Shake Keep it going. Shake it off fire. I don't know none of these songs, bro. I know Shake It we Off. We are never, ever, ever getting, getting back, back together. together. Fire, fire, fire. Absolutely fire. crazy. Fire. Our song, crazy. Don't know any of those. See, that's four you just named up. Let's just keep going. I just started listening to this girl for the first time last week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. What you, what you did with all the songs? Come on, play Damn. one of them, man. Let's make Shake Scooter, It Off. Let's make Scooter some money. Play one of them. <laughs> get it, get it, Scooter. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you. I don't know none of these songs, Cruel yo. Summer, crazy. How does Cruel Summer go? It's a cruel summer. <laughs> it's a cruel summer. We are never, ever, ever having a cruel, cruel summer. summer. <laughs> I knew you were cruel when you, you came walked around. In. Cruel, it cruel it off. Cruel it off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this girl is unstoppable. Give me a goddamn Now, nah, Taylor's a beast. fucking up my point. Taylor Swift is a beast. <laughs> no, you all fucking You're fucking up my point. You're not <laughs> scrolling, bro. She's hating. Nah. We were scrolling all through, Beyonce. But by the way, man, Taylor Swift just has her audience, man. Like she has her audience of people that fuck with her. Her so audience I'm, is everyone. That's what. Uh, Bro, uh, you're a Taylor fan. You just went through all them Taylor Swift songs. You know you what? Loved them. I don't know if Taylor's audience is diverse as Beyonce. I don't know. I I think I Taylor will... has a, a strong Midwest, down South Bro. following. I think Taylor's audience is a lot more white than Beyonce. I that's think, true. I think Beyonce had her. I think personally, Beyonce might have had a broader white audience before that Super Bowl performance she did that people said was uh, anti-police. When she was actually, it was actually anti-police brutality. Mm -hmm. But everybody was saying it was anti-police. I noticed a shift in how America viewed her, looked at Beyonce after that. How, well, how did we look at her? Um, I just think people, yeah, people were, people were, that's, but that's why people at that level don't make those kind of stands yeah. mm. because they do. Too much to lose. It's too much to lose, right? You're because, everybody's artist at that point. Because if you look at some of the projects that Beyonce put out kind of after that, like the Lion King soundtrack was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was great musically, but I don't think it sold 
tremendous, which is kind of crazy, right? Because yeah. that's the Lion King. That's yeah. the Lion King and the Lion King soundtrack. I thought that would have did a lot better than it did. And then Renaissance came out, and Renaissance did like a respectable 300 something thousand in the first week. But then you look at somebody like Taylor, Taylor did a million. Yeah. You know, in her first but week. Adele Taylor. did like a million. Taylor had that perfect week. storm though, because she was doing the whole uh, campaign to buy her masters yeah. back and remake all the songs. So basically, it reintroduced even the young generation to even her old stuff. Yeah, and so it was just a perfect storm, and that's why when you have a concert and now you're performing all your greatest hits, and you're getting money from every single stream of people trying to catch up on those hits, it's yeah. a perfect storm. Well, that's just why I think it. the Renaissance tour is so good. So for... you're saying she's the greatest of all time? No, for that nah, reason. Uh, actually not. You can't even sing more than four of her songs. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous. You know four. <laughs> I knew you were gorgeous when you walked in. I think uh, you knew more. On. You knew more Michael this, Jackson than you do Taylor. I of think course, this, Michael Jackson's the second Michael Jackson. greatest of all time. Stop. It's Michael fucking Jackson. I think Beyonce is the closest thing to Michael, and I think that the Renaissance tour is the best thing for Beyonce because people are being reminded of how fantastic she is. Who forgot I do, though? Who forgot? I do think after that Super Bowl performance. That one when she, uh, you know, stood up for poli against police brutality, I think that kind of, that shifted things in America. Because even the way they would talk about her, like the way Fox News started to talk about her, mm -hmm. and a lot of the oh, conservatives she started a to talk about her. political yeah. um, <clears throat> lightning rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, I, I think that kind of made like a Lynch lot of those him. white fans that was probably on Beyonce kind of fall back a mm -hmm. little bit. You know what I'm saying? And they might just be coming back around now. Yo, Beyonce needs to get on that country wave. What was that country song she had? Did she have a country song? Which one? Country's really doing it right now. Oh, yeah. no, they killing. Country's, Country's killing. like yeah. the top country five songs is. in the country. Country is... What's Taylor's uh, fan base called? Swiffers or something? Yo, you, 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 you are really a hater. And I I'm you not, are really I a hater. Yo. yo, that's some hater shit. Swifties. Who do you think has a bigger fan base? Oh, Taylor. Come on. It's not close. Like, no, I'm just saying, like, rallying around her, though. Because Beyonce close. got the Beehive. They don't play. Well, no, they definitely are better with her. That's social OG. media. Beehive is social media. Yeah. Beehive is social media. I mean, listen, man, we're talking about numbers. Like Bad I said. Bad Bunny might be the, the most. Pull up album sales. Pull up Taylor Swift album sales. I think she sold, like, 75 million worldwide. Well, I, don't want, I don't want this to happen. I don't want us to do what? this to Beyonce. It's unfair. <laughs> if you're comparing her to Michael Jackson, that's a fine comparison. Yeah. No, nobody can fuck with Michael. In terms of album sales, anything. Mike, that's not right. That's one album. Go, 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 you go Taylor Swift total alone. album sales. I am here with you. Michael, 114 million units. Taylor Swift is sold. Now go to Beyonce total album sales. And this is just Beyonce as a solo artist. It's not even counting Destiny's Child. She has 171 million She's in the amazing. United She's States. She's amazing. It's man, that's just in the U.S. There's nothing like it. There's nothing wow. like it. There's oh. nothing like it except for Taylor and Michael Jackson. <laughs> Those are the only things that I would say are like it. Can we say just Taylor has her own like? Because Taylor and I'm, I know I'm wrong in saying this. Taylor feels like a state. Beyonce feels like a planet. Mm. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> Taylor feels like, planet even though I know I'm wrong about this, I, it is. That's what I'm saying. But that's how it feels, right? It feels like Beyonce is her own world. What is Michael Jackson a city? Is are no, we just Michael Jackson's a universe. The greater the small, the smaller we go, the greater we get. Michael Jackson's a universe. <laughs> Michael Jackson is a universe. Like seriously, all of these people exist in Michael Jackson's universe in some way, shape, or form. And Beyonce okay, then Michael Jackson's universe, Taylor is a galaxy, and then Beyonce is a planet. <laughs> Taylor feel like I a agree. state. Taylor feel like Oklahoma. No. <laughs> and I know I'm wrong with that. Yes, you are wrong. Okay, what's the biggest state? Texas? Yeah, uh, Texas or Canada. Taylor's the biggest state. Alaska, right? Is it oh, by, yeah, by Texas, whatever? Texas, yeah. Okay, so Taylor's feel she feels like Alaska, even though I know I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, you are wrong. She feels like Alaska. She don't yeah, feel yeah. like she have her own world. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And Beyonce then, has a her own planet, probably even her own galaxy. See, now you're trying to bring it up to galaxy because I said Taylor had a galaxy, and you feel like you need to step it up. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Michael Jackson's <laughs> universe, Beyonce's galaxy. Yeah. Taylor's planet. No. Pluto. She's Pluto. No. Could be a planet. Might not be a planet. It, it's like. 
it's crazy what you're doing right now. <laughs> what? It's really crazy what, what you're doing right now what? because you're trying <laughs> to take away the success and greatness of the arguably the greatest artist of all time. I mean, listen, it's the greatest of artists of all time. Taylor's Taylor's there, bro. She writes all her music. No. I, we don't want to no. have that discussion. No. We don't want to have that Whoa. conversation. Whoa. We don't want to have that conversation. Whoa. No. Yeah, just, Scooter writes you. her music. <laughs> he owns Scooter, it. Scooter, <laughs> yeah. Owner and writer are very different. If I look up her publishing. Owner and writer like are Scooter very writes. different. <laughs> Owner and writer are very different. She writes all her own music. So we don't want to have that conversation about greatest artists of all time. We don't want to have that conversation. We do not. We do not want to have the conversation of, of writing their own songs, and that's what makes a great artist. We're not talking about the greatest performer There's of all no time. There's no way Taylor writes all her If we're talking about no all of it, nah, 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 nah. all no, of it. Hey, nobody really writes their own music. Hey, hey, nah. hey, 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 hey. Nobody really writes All of music. it. <laughs> Michael Jackson didn't even write his own music. He didn't. No, 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 he didn't. That's why I'm trying to say, if we want to have the conversation of greatest artists of all time, and I know that we don't want to have you this conversation, what, it's Taylor motherfucking Swift. Taylor might write her own music. That's why all her songs sound the same. Oh, yeah. now we hating. I knew you could shake it off. Shake yeah, it exactly. off. To the left, to the to left. The le <laughs> to the halo, to the halo. <laughs> to the lemonade, to the lemonade. This guy is great. Right, like, lemonade, to the lemonade. Right? Come on. It's, every song is the same. Every song is the same. What I'm trying to say. You must not know about lemonade. lemonade. That's it. <laughs> And what I'm trying to say is if we want to talk about greatest artists of all see, time, they, and they got to write their songs, because no, if they don't no, have to write their no, songs, no. put Frank Hold Sinatra on. in there. Let's say some real shit. Yes, Taylor Swift is written and is credited as a songwriter on all of her songs. That don't mean she wrote them all. That means she just wrote Oh, I know y'all not going to do this. Yeah. I'm just saying. I know y'all not going to Beyonce Taylor. I'm just saying. I know y'all not going to Beyonce Taylor. I know y'all not going to Beyonce look, Taylor. It says she has also collaborated. I know y'all not going to Beyonce Taylor. She's co-written with many other songs. I know y'all not going to Beyonce Taylor. Big Ed Sheeran, baby. I know we're not going to do this. Jack Jackanoff. What's his name? Jack, what what Jack, the Jack, hell Jack, did you Jack just Hint say? No. What the hell did you just say? Jack Jackanoff. Jack Jackanoff. That's Jack Jackanoff. Jack Jackanoff. <laughs> she, she do got a lot of writers, though. No, she has I collaborated with them. She writes all the albums. Y'all know she writes all the albums. Taylor Stop trying to hate her. Y'all trying to hate. Y'all trying to say, okay, but no, I'm just no, saying. It does say more than 60 songs credit her as a sole writer. Show me 60 Beyonce songs that were solo writer. Solo Easy. writer. Pull solo. Pull it up, Taylor. Ooh, I love solo this. Solo writer. Pull it up, Taylor. Solo writer. Pull it up, Taylor. Solo writer. Pull it up, Taylor. Charlo, I really you hope you're right about this one, up. <laughs> You do not want to pull this up. You do not want to pull this up. Why do you... Have you not listened to this podcast? <laughs> Charlo made a secret mole in my case. He's a, he's, a he's a mole for Taylor. Ooh. Oh, shit. Yes, by and large, Beyonce writes all her own songs. She is credited as the lead songwriter on each of Rick's lead. tracks. Lead is writing, not solo. She's, she's credited with Lead writing, is not solo. She's credited with writing all the songs on Lemonade 2. But as we've mentioned, some of her biggest hits have been co-written with up to 25 other people. Same thing as Taylor. You... Same thing as Taylor. You wanted you one of the greatest liars in history. <laughs> yo, yo, you really wanted the greatest liars. That's the second time I heard this today. <laughs> Your boy said that to me earlier. You wanted the greatest <laughs> liars. Your boy literally said that to me today. You wanted the greatest said, liars. You're one of the greatest liars ever, and everybody knows that you know that's what they say about you. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Coy going for the jungle. Oh, because I haven't been to one of his shows yet. He's like, you go to everybody else's fucking comedy show. <laughs> hey, Joe, it took him damn near 14 years not true. before he came to one of them. Not true. Yeah. I went to Caroline's. Oh, yeah, you went to Caroline's earlier. Really. Then you had a little not hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little hiatus. You know what I mean? But hey, it's okay. Man, I saw you. I needed to see you. That's <laughs> I saw, when I saw you at Caroline's, I said, yo, Andrew's one of the best. Next thing I know, you're doing Radio City. It Fair made enough. sense to me. Great. Well, one of the greatest liars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for my point. All I'm saying is, if we talk about one of the, if we're talking about one of the greatest uh, singers, dancers, performers of all time, Beyonce, right? It's listen, Beyonce. If you want to talk about one of the greatest performers of all time, uh, Elvis. You want to talk about one of the greatest performers? Never of saw all Elvis. Time? Felt no, like but he was I think we can argue he's pretty damn good. Felt Michael, like he was overrated. Michael Jackson. Nobody comes close. That's right. Uh, Prince, Jesus, we're, we're not even talking about. I will Prince. say, I'll just. Oh no, no, no. Playing all the close. instruments. Oh, by the way, why are we not even mentioning? Oh, by the way, we don't talk about this enough. Prince, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, the best musical artist ever. 
What about Ray wait, Charles? Wait, wait. Ever. Wait, wait, wait. Ray Charles? Stevie Wonder and Prince are the best musical artists of any genre ever. But We're ex saying, explain music. But wait, music wait, arts means you, you have to write and... They write, they produce, they play instruments, everything. They, they, Stevie and Mike, Stevie and Prince do everything. Yeah, but they don't got the bops Taylor has. That's the problem. I put Ray Charles in that. They don't have the, the amount of plays bops. everything and he writes. No hey, disrespect. Hey, listen, no disrespect to Prince, but I think Prince is kind of like a Carl Malone in that, like, they, we just needed a, a somebody to give credit to outside of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was so dominant that there was just a couple years nah. where it was like, all right, just give someone else the nah. MVP. Give it to Carl Malone. Nah. Prince, it's more LeBron and Steph. Prince is not in nah. the same. It's more LeBron and Steph, yo. He's not in the same ballpark as Michael Jackson, bro. Yes, he I, is. I, I'm bro. sorry, it's, it's not. No, Put yes, the he box is. up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Put the box up. Name Prince. one besides Purple Little Rain. Lil Red Carvette, oh. Purple Rain. Pull up Prince song. Prince got a million joints. That's why you got Google, Taylor. Nah, but you pull nah, up. Nah, you nah. If it ain't up here, it ain't exactly. up there. No, that's not true. If it ain't up here, <laughs> that's not it true. That's not true. Diamonds and Pearls, Purple Rain, Little Red Corvette. You just named two I just said. Yeah. Huh? Now. Stop. Oh, when doves cry, that's, that's, that should have been top of mind. Yes, kiss, you got the look. Raz oh, Raspberry Beret, come on, man. Raspberry Beret. Adore, like, yo, Prince got bops, man. Like, Stop. No, no, he got bops, but it's no. not messing with Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, we can all sit here right now and name 30 songs right now, no problem. Yeah. 30! 30! It's like, oh. 30! I'm with you on Michael. But we're not gonna act 30. like we're not gonna. You won't compare four maybes. No, no. If, we, we talk about raspberry berets. You can't say Fuck out of here. Prince ain't bro. Carl Malone, bro. Fuck out of here, bro. Prince ain't Carl Malone, bro. Yo, like Prince is he's not Carl Malone. Malone. Nah, nah, Incredibly nah. dominant, nah, nah. weird sexual shit. Nah. But he's not fucking with Michael Jordan. Incredibly dominant, weird sexual shit. He's not fucking with Michael Jordan, bro. I'm saying Prince is Carl Malone. <laughs> He's not Carl Malone, He's man. He's Carl Malone, man. So who is Stevie Wonder then? Because Stevie... Helen Keller. Wrote for Michael. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest blind ever. That's the greatest blind ever. should have said, Stevie can't see none of this. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie's third, yo. <laughs> Stevie can't see Prince Hall. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> But well, listen, Stevie Wonder. Fuck y'all, man. You know, you know the, the fucked up Fuck thing. Fuck y'all. You know why? We, you know the fucked up thing about Prince. It's all about how you go out too. The reason Prince isn't celebrated the way he is. The reason James Brown isn't celebrated the way they are. Because there were things that trumped their death. When Michael Jackson died, the world Stop. stopped. Stop. Stop. Sadly, Propyrol. sadly, when somebody passes. What? By the way, what? amazing. Propyrol. You know what I mean? You hit it. You got that. Pro I got that right? colonoscopy. Come on. That colonoscopy. That and that endoscopy. Oh my Pro god. Parole. And the doctors will tell you this is stuff that Michael Jackson was using. Woo. As soon as you wake up, you're like, I can I see. Get I get it. I get it all the I way. I get it all the way. But the crazy thing about Prince, Prince died. Well, let's start with James Brown. <laughs> James Brown died on Christmas. Not beating Christmas. Yo, James Brown. James should, we should be having these conversations. James should be in these conversations. Yeah. Yo, you, James Brown might be the greatest ever because he didn't even have words. Imagine being able to make <laughs> songs that are that impactful that don't even got words. That, imagine how musical you got to be. Think about that. He was the first rapper. He definitely was the first rapper. No, he was. My daddy used to always say, my daddy used to be like, James Brown is the first rapper. He used to always say that. I'm a ha. Hey, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> and James of, eh. was the inspiration for all of these people. Let's be clear on that. Who? All of them. The James Princes, Brown? Michael Jackson's, all Michael of them. Jackson's Come on, yo. You can't compare James Brown to Michael Jackson's time. No, I said... Well, there's different eras, right? That's like comparing yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. J to Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, it's literally like, like Michael Jordan. Chris, you want to say something? I was going to add Diana Ross to that, too. Man, Chris, Diana's shut up there, the too. Fuck <laughs> up. Do the math. Do the fucking mouth. Do the math. Do the fucking mouth with that bullshit. Do the math. Diana Ross. Do the math. fuck out of here. Diana was a beast, yo. Do the math. No. I don't think she was as good a performer. Get out of here. Because she didn't dance. What's one Diana Ross song? Come on, bro. Diana. I want to dance no, 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 with no, no, somebody. No, no, no. I'm, I'm coming out. Diana created the gay anthem of all gay anthems. I'm coming up. Come on, man. I want the world to know. Come on, man. Diana's different. What's another one after that? I mean, YMCA. Shut up. Look at James, bro. God look at damn. James. James looked like a mop. James left it all on the stage. Yeah. Come on. James left it all on yeah. the stage, man. He really did. Now, let's go to Prince. 
When did Prince die? When? Prince died April 22nd. Wow. 2016. Pull it up. Let me make sure I'm right, Taylor. Pull it up. Let me touch myself. Pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like James Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me touch myself. Ha! Huh? Prince. They don't look good. Oh, April 21st. You're right. April 21st. Okay, the reason I said the 22nd, because on April 21st, Breakfast Club pre-records all of its interviews. Breakfast Club did an interview with a guy by the name of Birdman on April 21st, 2016. I remember doing the MTV Upfronts. I was hosting or something that night, and the news came that Prince died. MTV immediately, immediately changed all their programming on the network, wow. changed all the programming at the Upfronts. Wow. And I remember thinking to myself the next day, Damn, should we even play Birdman? Nobody's even gonna care and then about the Birdman. And then interview. what happened? And then what happened? We, I said, fuck it, Birdman's only two minutes, and, so let's play the two minutes and, and then happened? we get back to Prince. Nobody Put remembers Prince again. Nobody name. Nobody remembered that. Because of you, you fucking dick. Put some respect on You fucking <laughs> killed Prince's legacy. The person, <laughs> the person who y'all should have been, been putting Prince's respect. Y'all should have been putting respect on Prince's name Facts, that weekend. Bro. Because it was a weekend. It was How a Thursday. April 21st was a Thursday. Friday was April 22nd. We played a Birdman nah, all bro. weekend. That it was, was Birdman, crazy. Birdman, Birdman mania. Y'all should have been putting some respect on Prince's name. So my point with saying all of that is people do remember how you go. And a lot they of times... Because of you. <laughs> you really did ruin his legacy. That is not true. Life. But there is something to that, though, right? Yeah, you ruined it. No. But also, it was ruinable. I'm telling you, that, that, that interview on The Breakfast Club is not going viral on Michael Jackson's death day. It's not. It's not. You ain't even putting it up because you're like, nothing could compete with this. But Damn. you knew deep down Carl Malone died. <laughs> you knew deep down the mailman not delivering today. I was shocked by that one. I thought Prince was going to be the one. I thought Prince was one of those ones that would stop the world. I'm not going to lie. I really did. You are and not then, and then, alone. And then remember, I remember after Prince passed away, we had a debate about you. who could stop the world. Son, what's if, the next line? If they passed away. No, you're not. Something. Nah, we gotta look those lines up. Like you are not alone, lyrics. You are not alone. <laughs> I am here <laughs> with you. <laughs> Though we're you're far apart. apart. <laughs> Shake it off. <laughs> 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 what? I can't, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You uh, uh, That ain't the one. You, uh, the one that make you cry is man in the you're, mirror. Bro. Oh no, it's though you. Uh, I am here with you. Every day. Though you're far away, I am here, here to stay. stay. But, but you, you are not alone. I am here with you. But you are not alone. You're not alone. Alone, alone, alone. You know what you should have went to go see? Michael Jackson on Broadway. I saw it. Oh, you did see it. We talked about that fine ass little Dominican. Oh, uh, <laughs> Miles Frost. God. Was that his name? He's Dominican? Huh? Miles ain't Dominican. That light skinned one. He looked Cuban or something. Damn. Oh. What you want to frost his tips? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even go I forward on that one. I tried. Miles, I'll frost his tips. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Latter day Saints. Salute to Miles Frost. Oh, my Wait, God. What's the one that makes you cry? Oh, Man in the Mirror. Pull up Man in the Mirror, Taylor. Michael um, Jackson. This, is, this right here, I'm telling you, if you ever want to cry for any reason, this one right here. Boy, this shit here will make you change your motherfucking life. Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror. Come on now. I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I, I see the kids in the street. We're not enough to eat. Who, Who am, am I, I to be fine pretending not to see their knees? A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top. They, they follow each other on the wind, you know. They follow each other on the wind, you know. Because they got nowhere. Get him to 
change his way. And the old method could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. God damn, man. Ain't one Prince song make you do that, bro. There ain't one Prince song make you do that. Diamonds and Pearls. Not, 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 Diamonds and Pearls don't make me do that, but Diamonds and Pearls is close. Diamonds and Pearls. I don't even know the words to that song. Come on, man. Pull up Diamonds and Pearls, because I don't know me. No. But when that shit come on, I, when that shit come on. <laughs> that you got some. I just know Prince ain't Carl Malone. Carl Malone was fantastic. Yeah. He was great. No, he was. No, he won the MVP over Michael Jordan, even though he shouldn't have, and that's Prince. We don't talk about Carl Malone having a white savior enough. What does that mean? You know, <laughs> black, people, white black people who have white saviors. What does that mean? I've only had black saviors in my life. <laughs> <laughs> John Stockton oh. was absolutely Carl Malone's white savior. Carl Malone ain't shit without his homeboy. Do you think that he was like the real blind side? Do you think Stockton adopted Carl Malone? Ooh. Ooh. You also Maybe. Heard, you heard the drama about that blind Oh, I definitely did. But you know, I always thought it was, that shit was fishy. I watched yeah. that fucking movie and I said, oh, this is some, this is some cuckolding going on, bro. Yeah. He fucked, like, I always felt like, Let's you get know, out. he was just in there laying it down on that wife, you know Oh, what I mean? 100%. I always felt that. Oh, 100%. And what makes it even crazier is the fact that he wasn't even legally adopted. How did that happen? I didn't know that. Yes. They did a conservatorship instead of adoption. Why did they do that? That's what I want to know. How does that work? <laughs> they saw the vision and was like, uh, we need to control your finances. Oh, forever. So, but, I, but hold Not on. Forever, but but uh, I thought you had to have legal guardianship with somebody to have a conservatorship. Conservative, whatever. Yeah, I think you do. That's what I'm saying. He's not even, he wasn't legally adopted. Nah, that shit is peculiar, bro. Man. But hold on real quick. Does anybody know how this song sounds? I know the hook. Diamonds and pearls. (laughs) Do you want to be a boy or a girl? You scroll would. down, Taylor. You that, would. Yeah, that's that's would. really it. Look, that's look, 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 look. You would. That's look. why you love this oh, shit. Oh, no, that's bro. not it. He goes, if I gave you diamonds and pearls, would you be a happy boy or a girl? If I could, I would give you the world. Diamonds and pearls slaps, bro. No. Anyway, go to uh, slaps, go to either bro. Ray Charles. If you really want to get emotional, we got we got to go Ray Charles or Stevie Wonders. Stevie Wonder. Or Jelly Roll Save Me. That's oh, my God. Jelly Roll one. Save Me is guaranteed. What does Jelly Roll Save Me? Oof. You haven't played this song right now. Oh, my God. Go on YouTube, play Jelly Roll Save Me. What is that about? <laughs> Get his cholesterol? <laughs> <laughs> what God, is I knew it. it. <laughs> <laughs> what, is that? what is that? Salute to my guy, Jelly Roll. What is that about, <laughs> man? <laughs> what, what is Save Me about, man? I mean, it is about saving a butt from, like, you know. Living bad. It's it's an amazing song. I like Jelly Roll. He got it's good energy. Amazing. I mean, I just ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got the we got the sound. Yeah, play. It. She got 188 million views. Didn't even know if he was gonna put it on the album. Look at the top comment. I was not expecting. Keeping this from me. Oh, this shit. Oh, Phenomenal, bro. Ah, yeah, Yo, Jelly Roll. Gets me every time. Salute to goddamn nah, Jelly Roll. Shit. Fucking Alex over there crying. That shit gets me, bro. That shit hard. I get drunk and that, it got a uh, John Mayer waiting on the world to change type mm, energy to it. Yeah, but. Goddamn Jelly Roll. Beautiful. I thought Jelly Roll rapped. He did, but now he's also singing. He's doing rock, country. Like, he's what, just so what, musical. What I love about that. Is he was dead serious about yeah. everything he said in that song because he didn't make any lifestyle changes after that record. Yeah. None. Yeah. Clearly. He has a little bit. He did? Yeah, yeah. He's getting into he, he's it. Getting he's getting, getting after it now. Really? Yeah. Well, good, good Jelly Roll, because we need you around, brother. Facts. That shit, Dale. Man. That's beautiful. That was a beautiful song. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, who knew that out of all of these legends we were talking about, That's the Jelly one. Roll was going to shut it down? Yup. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's pay some bills, man. All right, let's take a break, man. And I got to talk to you about Elevate. 
Elevate You. Salute to my guy, Steve Harvey, man. I got to tell you about something that's been keeping all of us feeling fresh, healthy, and energized lately. It's Elevate You, Vitality Daily Greens, co-founded by my OG, Big Unk, Steve Harvey, and formulated by Harvard scientists, okay? This game-changing formula boosts your body's mitochondrial production, providing you with sustained energy throughout the day. No more relying on coffee or unhealthy energy drinks to get you going. It's packed with over 30 superfoods, vitamins, and minerals to feel energized, focused, and ready to tackle your day, okay? Let me tell you about some of the key benefits. 30 superfoods per serving, nine greens per serving, clinically studied probiotics, contains fruits, vegetables, mushrooms, all in a blend, enzymes to aid digesting, zero grams added sugar, I said zero grams added sugar, vegan, you hear that, Chloe? You hear that, cousin, Clo cousin Chloe? It's vegan, gluten-free, 15 calories per serving, cost only a dollar. 50 per day. Elevate You also has... <laughs> bless, you. bless you. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your full purchase price. I know how hard it is to stay on top of your health and nutrition game. Sometimes it feels like there just aren't enough hours in the day to get everything done. But with Elevate You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. This stuff is packed with all the nutrients and vitamins you need to keep your body running like a well-oiled machine. And the best part, it's super easy to use. Just mix a scoop into your water, a juice, and you're good to go. And it comes in three delicious flavors, chocolate, tart cherry, and original greens. And check this out. Elevate You also has a 60-day money-back guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, they'll refund your money full purchase price. So take control of your health today and experience more daily, more daily energy with Elevate You, Vitality Daily Greens. Go to ElevateYou.com, L-E-V-A-T-E-Y-O-U.com and use promo code IDIOTS for 15% off your entire purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Hezzy, you got church announcements? Yes, sir. What you got? What you got? Yo, Australia, thank you guys so much. That was absolutely crazy. Um... Yeah, we're, we're adding shows. We added another one in Perth. We added another one in Sydney. Uh, Unreal. I mean, these venues are crazy what we're doing. How big, how big is this? Like, these arenas. Yeah, so Sydney is 8,000. So we're adding another one there. And then in Melbourne, it's it's where they do the Australian Open for tennis. Damn. It's crazy. <laughs> I was just, I don't know. I was just sitting there the other day just laughing to myself because I posted on the story. And I, and I didn't know how to process it. Because it's so, like, I'm sure you've had moments in your career where you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, and I'm starting to realize that's more common than I realize. Because you said that, and I was talking to Joy Corey earlier, because I asked him, I actually asked him, why the fuck did he cry on flagrant? Yeah. <laughs> and he said that was the reason. Yeah. Because it just hit him in that moment, like, oh, shit, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm living my it. dream. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so we added those um, and shows. So go get those tickets. Uh, we're coming to Brisbane as well, and uh, and Adelaide as well. So go get those. Uh, Calgary, we're coming to you as well. And then we also got shows. If you couldn't get tickets to Toronto at Scotiabank Arena, to those shows, we have a show in Niagara on September 22nd, Niagara Falls. And then we have one in Windsor, Ontario on September 23rd. So grab tickets to both of those. And uh, Dublin, Ireland, few tickets left to that. Get those before those gone. DeAndreStrolls.com. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Hottest comedy ticket in the world. Let's go. Not America, the world. <laughs> Okay, uh, I just want to tell everybody, make sure you go get Invisible Generals. Pre-order that now. That's my guy, Doug Melville's book. Uh, it tells the amazing true story of America's first black generals, Benjamin O. Davis Sr. and Jr., a father and son who helped integrate the American military and create the famous Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, that'll be out in November, but it's available for pre-order now. That's the next release on Black Privilege Publishing. Also, man, go to Audible. I want you to check out everything we got on Audible, from Finding Tamika to Summer of 85, but our latest project that we put out is uh, Alicia Renee, Unleash for Love. It is an audio scripted romantic comedy, man. People are loving it. Uh, please keep uh, going there and leaving your reviews. Go there and give it, you know, whatever stars you think it deserves. But um, just go check that out on Audible. And uh, make sure you go to blackeffect.com, man, and just check out all the new podcasts that we got on blackeffect.com. Not even just the new podcast, the OG podcast that have been rocking with us uh, for the last three years as well. Okay? Okay. Um, let's get back to the show. What else we got? Bro, there's a lot of tings happening right Talk now. Talk to me, man. Talk to me, man. It's a lot of tings Give me some happening. tings. Give me we some got, tings. Uh, we have this Canelo, uh, Charlo fight. Um, 
maybe I'm missing something. Was this, was Charlo, did Charlo, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, like, I, you were saying Steve thinks that Charlo's going to win? I just can't fathom Canelo's losing to anybody when he's coming down in weight. I, I just can't. Uh, Canelo's knocked well, out actually, guys at 175. No, 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 he's going, uh, uh, Charlo went up two weight classes. Where are they fighting at? What weight? 168? 160-something. Well, uh, 168 is two weight classes because Charlo fights at what, 154? I, yeah, he went up two weight classes. 160 something. Go look, look that up, Taylor. Either one, if they're fighting yeah. at 160, now 168 is too big. There's no. Nah, way. he went up two weight classes. Charlo's coming all the way up to 168. Yeah, he went up two weight classes because you remember Charlo has been hurt. Charlo hurt his hand. He hasn't fought since May of 2022 because he hurt his hand. And, um, you know, the fight presented itself. So that's a big money fight. You know you what I mean? Take it. If you're you Charlo, know? you got to take it. That's why they're actually scripting him. I think the WBO. Is stripping him on one of his belts because he's um, going up to fight Charlo and he's got a mandatory with that dude Tim uh, Tim Tim Tim, Tim Zoo. Zoo Tim Zoo yeah but I Costa mean, Zoo's son yeah do you remember Costa Zoo fought Zab Judah and uh, knocked out Zab yeah, Judah yeah yeah yeah, yeah you remember yeah. Zab Judah got knocked out and he and he had the legs that he his brain was in his upper body was yeah. in but he had the legs that weren't Leg, there yeah that yeah, was yeah, yeah that was Costa yeah. Zoo so Costa Zoo's son Tim Zoo is now I think like a hundred. 40 or like 147. Pounds. 147. He's at 147. 147. Yeah, yeah. He's going. He's going to get the WBO belt, the welterweight belt. Jermel, um, I mean, yo, you can't be mad at Jermel for ducking the man. Not ducking, but avo not wanting to fight the mandatory to go get the money. Because he's definitely go not get the money. Mike. And, 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 and I'm gonna tell you what I like about Jermel. We had Jermel on Breakfast Club. Jermel's like, look, I'm gonna fight Canelo, and then I'm gonna go back down to fight Bud at 154. Oof. That's tough shit. I don't give a fuck. Coming down in weight is tough. You know Because you're adding on all that muscle. Like, remember how tr tricky that was for Roy Jones? He came up to fight uh, Ruiz. And, and then he came back down. And they back came down, back and down. down. Tarver. Out. Well, no, he came back down, and I think he beat Tarver in a tough fight. Oh, I thought Tarver was It was a decision. Him out. No. I thought Tarver won. No, I think he came back down. He beat Tarver in like a really tough fight. I thought when he came back down, he got knocked out. No, and then they fought again. And he got knocked out. And that's when he knocked out. Because. Mm. Yeah, so, but it was really tough for him to cut. You add all that muscle, that muscle don't go away quick. Yeah, man. And Canelo said, there's no way he fighting. He coming down to fight, bud. <laughs> he said, we had Canelo on Breakfast Club, too. We had both of them on this morning. What? Yeah. I been, was talking to Canelo. Way better than he used to be. <laughs> like, Tell me about this. What was yeah, it? Can uh, can they, when Canelo first came to the Breakfast Club, he had a translator. You know what I'm saying? Like, now he don't need it. Like, he's sitting down, and we're actually having a conversation. He understands... Things that we're talking about, and he, he, you know, he's, yeah, I fuck with Canelo. Like, What'd he say? Um, he said, there's no, he said he'd fight Bud at 168. He said there's no way he could come down to 154. He hates coming. He said he just can't do it no more. Yeah. He said he'll go up, but he can't, he, he can't come down. Wow. You know? So he said he'd fight him at 168. And I mean, honestly, man, there's really nothing for Bud to do except for rematch Earl Spence at this point. Nobody want to see that. But what, there's nothing else out there for him. Like, what else is there for him? Because he Charlo. He set up a nice Charlo fight when but, he was but, talking but, shit to But him he wants stands. to fight Charlo so he can become three-time three undisputed champion. You yeah. know what I mean? Why? Is Charlo undisputed right now? Charlo's undisputed. At 154. At 154. But they're about to take his... They're taking the WBO belt from him. So Tim Zhu, Zhu. I think, is getting that. Yeah. And then Charlo will have three belts. So I don't know. Maybe maybe if, okay, if, they, if Bud wants, is. he fights Sue. Perfect, right? Gets the belt. Exactly. And then, then Charlo got to come back down to fight Bud to try to become undisputed again, you know? And then he's three-time undisputed. And people will tune if he in beats for that. Bud, that's yeah, cool. that's a good fight. Yeah. Yo, low-key, Bud's got us caring about belts again. There was a long time in boxing where belts didn't matter at all. Yeah. But since he's doing something historic, we're like, oh, shit, yeah. I want to see this happen. Yeah. Did it's you ever pull up the weight, Taylor? But wait, tell me about Canelo. You never said what, what he was talking about. Like, what's... Canelo was cool, man. He said he only stops fucking one week before a fight. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How do you say? Yeah, shout out to Mexicans, bro. They, you know they ain't stopping that. <laughs> he said some people like a month or two months. He said all he need is a week. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And how do you say it? What, what, how I do just you asked ask him? him. I said, yo, are you one of those guys that don't have sex before fights? He goes a week. The beautiful thing about Canelo being that like his he doesn't, he's just, I guess, learning how to speak English well, all his answers are straight and to the point. Yeah. Quick. Do you think Oscar De La Hoya is a good person? No. <laughs> do you, think, do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just very, like... You don't know how to be political. No. Yeah. He's just really to the point, like, no, no. 
You know, but it was it was. I mean, it was good wearing both of them uh, tomorrow. No, I'm looking for the weight. I know he's 154, but what are him and Canelo fighting at? I think it's like 160, 160 something. Just do boxer Jamel Charles versus Canelo, Canelo Alvarez weight. catch weight. Huh? 168. 168. 168. Yeah. Wow. That's and then the lot. fight is September 30th. September 30th. Okay. But you know what I think I noticed today about Jamel Charlo is that he probably walks around that size anyway. And Canelo's not a big 168. He nah. probably walks around around 168. So they're both overblown 154s. Mm. Like, I think Canelo starts his career at 154, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he fought Floyd at 152? Or was yeah. that 148? I don't remember. No, 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 152. 152? Yeah, maybe it was 154. Or maybe yeah. it was 150 or something like that. Not like Canelo, man. Canelo was a true champion, you know what I mean? Um, and he said he's tired of people saying he's ducking Bene, 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 blah, blah, blah. Benavidez. Benavidez. Um, because he was like, they say that about every fucking body. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like they always tell me I'm ducking somebody to like get in the ring and beat him. The guy fought a light heavyweight, man. Bro, it's and was getting banged on and was in there banging. Canelo ain't ducking nobody. Canelo is the guy. He's yeah. he's the A side. He knows he's the A side. Everybody wants to fight Canelo Alvarez because they know it's a big money fight. Yeah. So he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. 100%. You know. Uh, what else we got, Taylor Gang? They 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 putting Trump behind bars or what? Told you. Nah, they ain't getting them. I called this one. They ain't getting them. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm shocked. Because if you go back and listen to Oberyn and his podcast, you couldn't tell me that he wasn't going to get locked up. Right? I knew he was going to get locked up. Then there was a part, and my there was a period where I was like, nah, it's not happening. Yo, he's been averaging one indictment a month for the past four months. Right. <laughs> like, he's like Kodak Black. Like, like, Kodak got the same. Nah, level. bro. Like, 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 he, and, and, and he now Kodak he's got right 91 now. criminal charges. Fannie Mae Willis. I don't even know if her name is Fannie Mae, but I call her Fannie Mae because she don't play. Fannie Mae Willis, <laughs> when she hits you with the Rico, she hits you with the fucking Rico, bro. Fannie Mae is the same prosecutor in Atlanta who gave who hit Young Thug in YSL with the Rico. And now she just hit Old Thug and goddamn OC, <laughs> OCL with the Rico. <laughs> old Caucasian life, different, bro. She hit Giuliani. She hit his lawyer. Like, she hit 19 people, yo. She better hope it sticks, bro, because if it doesn't stick, it's guaranteed presidency. With the uh, Rico's easier to prosecute. I have a theory about that now. There's one person has to turn. Oh, they it's 19 people, somebody guaranteed yeah, exactly, to flip. Yeah. 91 criminal charges, a lot of those shit is going to stick to Trump. Here's the thing about the presidency, and I want, I want everybody in MAGA to understand this. I want all Republicans to understand this. No matter how much you love the guy, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Is it? It's though? too much of a distraction. <laughs> He's too funny. He's facing 91 criminal charges. There's a lot of different people running for president. Republicans, we already know how y'all get down. Y'all all gonna follow the leader regardless. Y'all, y'all are way, y'all are more unified than Democrats will ever be. It does not matter who is on your ticket as long as y'all get behind that person and vote for him. You already know all of y'all are gonna always fall in line with each other. It's time to move on from Donald Trump, y'all. Wow. I, I, it's, it's just too much at this wow. point. Because think about it, right? There's not an industry in America. Donald Trump could be in, be facing 91 criminal charges and still have a job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They would have either suspended him, distanced themselves from him, fired him all together. There's got to be some type of standard for running for president of the United States of America, bro. Innocent until proven guilty, man. I'm boy. with you, so let's put him on ice. You know what I mean? Until all this shit is over. If you live long enough, you come back and do it again in 2020 fucking eight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But next year, nah, bro. It's too much of a distraction. How are you going to have Trump on the debate stage? You know what I mean? Like, like, like there's certain things not even Trump is good enough. To we love like distraction, my boy. We love distraction. But even Republicans are bringing this shit up now. Well, the problem is that they don't have anybody. So it's like DeSantis, all the Republicans start to get in line with DeSantis. And then he had his Howard Dean moment where he just continues to look like a goofy goober. So it don't have to be DeSantis. Yo, Donald Trump, let's be honest. And who is there? Donald Trump is the first charismatic Republican president in a long fucking time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've all been fucking tin cans. 
Whoa, whoa, charismatic Republican president. Yes. Now, George Bush was a... Uh, no, he wasn't. He was just goofy. No, he was... He was he a was goofball. He genuinely wasn't... Genuinely charismatic, yeah. funny... In a in a in a in a in a lick your elbows kind of way, in a in a Timmy, stop licking the window kind of way. You know what I'm it saying? It worked though. It worked. Like, I don't think I just think Republicans are that strong of a force that no matter who is the GOP candidate, they can get behind. No, that's also true. I'm just saying they need someone with charisma to get behind. And right now, not outside, not against you know, Biden. Well, outside of Trump, who can do it? I think anyone. DeSantis just not oh. DeSantis because DeSantis DeSantis is too he's 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 he's, he's proven himself to be Trump like people don't want that right. No, now. that's not the issue. I think that he's just too goofy as a as a person. Like people love his policies. Conservatives love his policies, and then there's Democrats that are like, yeah, I kind of like this guy's policies, and I like the fact that he's not just trying to be as salacious as Trump and just saying all these outlandish things. I like the He kind of is, though. He is, though. Like, even he's... the stuff he tends to attack is like, do people really give a fuck about that, bro? Yes, they do. Like, banning books in Florida? Like, they do. I don't think that's a national issue people care about They like do, that, they bro. do. But it doesn't matter. Point being... The LGBT stuff, I think if he was to attack that more with religion, I think he'd have a better shot Fair. There throughout are the country. I'm not saying that there are people that are right, but there are tons of people that feel very strongly about that. So, uh... I think Mike Pence could be... Get out of here. That guy's a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> so his biggest opposition is Ron DeSantis then. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. him, Mike Pence is big... Uh, Fat he's Boy. Just, he's... Cl he's What's yo, Jelly Roll? Fat Boy. <laughs> that was Jelly Roll, yeah, man. Chris What's Christie. It? Chris Christie. Yo, Christie. You know what I'm saying? Christie could do it... That's what I'm... If yes. he wasn't fat. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't look it. He doesn't look presidential. It's it's, it's the reality of the matter. He just doesn't look presidential. Bruh, if he come out there and sing, don't save me. <laughs> if he come out there, he said, save, yeah, save me. me. Come on, man. Uh, save me from myself. Listen, I think there's I think there's a plenty of Republican I've candidates. Been e and e and e and e and. They can there's get behind Tim Scott if they wanted the to. Shelf. They could get behind oh, Tim Scott if they wanted to. They could get behind Tim Scott if they wanted to. I'm just saying, well, there's, there's, I, I just think it's time. I don't think Tim Scott will do it, but the, the sleeper ticket... No, Scott is running. I, let me get it out. Oh, I don't okay. think Tim Scott will do it, but the sleeper ticket is Trump and Tim Scott. Nah, man. I'm just telling you, if Trump and Tim Scott are on the same you, ticket... You, it's, it's time to back away from Trump. I don't think they'll get Trump. behind that Indian dude. I forgot his name. Oh, Vivek. Or whatever. Vivek. Yeah, Vivek. Yeah, we had him on Breakfast Club. What'd you think about him? Uh, eh, you know, eh... I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't fuck with nothing that he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Because I what don't. Do you mean? Uh, one thing in particular is that he just started voting um, when he was 30 something years old. So he wasn't even in the process. So you just started voting, but yet you want to, you know, create legislation that makes it more difficult for people to vote. Like you want people to pass some type of civics test. You know what I'm saying? In order to know how to vote, and you just started voting at 30 something years old. It's like, come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, come on, bro. You know, and 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 I always feel kind of like leery about people like him who are anti-affirmative action when we know that his parents benefited from from, a, from yeah. affirmative action. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's yeah. just it's just it's just strange. You know, I'm happy he came on the show. I'm glad. You know, he, you know, listen, I, I'm open to talking to anybody. You know, and we got we actually do have a lot more Republican candidates coming, like Larry Elder's coming. You can make the argument that he's. His kids might be hurt by affirmative action. I would think. No, no. Affirmative action hurts his kids, not helps his kids. Mm. Because he's privileged. Not only is he privileged, but like, like for example, Asian students, yeah. they get like a 1600 on the SATs. They don't get into Harvard because Harvard's keeping spaces open for people who will do worse. And because of affirmative action. Yeah. So let's say Harvard lets in these Native Americans that are getting a 1130 on the SAT because they're like, hey, we need to even some stuff out because of affirmative action. If you're an Asian, if you're an Indian who's going to fucking ace the SATs, you're like, yo, the affirmative action isn't helping me. It's hurting me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But they got to do away with the legacy. Uh, legacy kids. But the legacy, legacy thing kids ain't number white affirmative action. Yeah. 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 What makes Christy run? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> when the Krispy Kreme light hits, turns on that fucking, when the hot light, when the, the hot, hot light, when the hot hot light, light turns on that Krispy Kreme. Why doesn't he just get on Ozempic, bro? Like, get on the Ozempic, lose the fucking weight, look Yo, presidential. 
don't work for everybody. I had a, I, I, Chris Christie, right? If I was running his campaign, I'd say, Chris, this is what you have to do. From now until next year, people have to see you get in shape. You can't just say, run, Christie, run. You have to say, America, we need to get in shape. Like, you have to use yeah. you as an example of America. Yeah. And you got to take a picture shirtless and say, this is America now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, like, this is where we are. You know what I mean? But on my campaign trail, I'm going to whip us into shape. And as you're on the campaign trail, they see you. Getting in the shape. I don't, I like you got, I don't care That's if you got. I don't care if you got to go do like the that. surgery. You know what I mean. I like that. But a lot. people need to see you getting in shape. So by what's it? Well, we're in August now. By August of next year, yeah. motherfuckers start seeing like, damn, Chris Christie really lost some weight. You know what I mean? Yeah, I he's, might he's start fucking with him. He got to do it because that, he is the charisma. He is the charisma to do it. And the I'm experience. Not, I'm not sure about his policy. Like he's just so anti-Trump. He's been coming at Trump any chance he can get. So it's like he, he used to be on Trump's, di Trump's yeah, dick. Yeah, but after they went at each other, now he's like every chance he gets, he tries to bash Trump. So now God the damn. Trump people won't. <laughs> that's not Come fucking on, real. Come he on. can't. Nah, that's how he dresses, bro. He dresses like the fucking. <laughs> he's Yo, he, he, sitting on a wall. He looks like a fucking sectional. He. <laughs> He looks like he, he looks like I can buy him out of IKEA. Yeah. He looks like four different versions of one motherfucker, yo. Yeah. Like what the? Oh he, my god. Doesn't he yo. look like all the townspeople couldn't put him back together? Yeah. <laughs> 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 he dumped. He fell off the wall. He does look like that, man. See, I can't vote for nobody like that. So he got to get it. You know, he got to get it chapped down. Yeah, yeah, man. If you can't look down and see your dick, how are you going to see the rest of the country? You can't. You know what I'm saying? You like, can't. No, 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 no. But yeah, I just think that the Republican Party has, it's time to move away from Trump. Let Trump go handle his business. Like, yo, Trump, like I said, if you around in four years, you come back, but you got to go sit the fuck down right now. Mm. Like, this is ridiculous. Nine, yo, I ain't never seen somebody have 91 criminal charges. That's a, that's a, I've never seen that in my life. Yeah. For, for anybody, yeah. 91? A significant amount. What do you think, Chris? I think he's obviously guilty, but I'm very concerned they won't stick. It's not going to stick. And they'll come out of it stronger. It's not going to stick. He's gonna you don't think so? I think it's, it's, when do the feds, the feds don't make mistakes like that, though. When do, since, when do, you, when do you ever see the feds? They got a 99% conviction rate. This is the 1%. I, it's gonna be, I mean, to me, it's almost irrelevant because it's broke. We've, we've broken the system, and there's no putting it back together again. It is if you make him get the fuck out, sit down. If, if he goes to jail, and but people, his supporters are never going to believe it anyway. So the, we let this guy into the system, and we're going to realize in about two or three years what a nice system we had. And now we've fucking blown it up. And everyone is like, oh, we need to hit reset. Oh, we needed to reset the board. We're going to see... Actually, we had it pretty good. Here's the thing. If you're, if you're a person that believes all of this is politically driven and politically motivated, you're probably right. But the reality is, if he didn't give them anything to latch on to, we wouldn't be in this situation. This is how you know President Barack Obama had to be one of the most law-abiding citizens ever. Ever. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, like, apparently gay. Allegedly, like right? It. But wait, 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 wait. Not allegedly. He wrote a letter said he dreams about it. <laughs> He didn't say it like Why are you upset that your president wants to <laughs> <laughs> He actually said it better than that. What he pull, said. Up, pull it up. Fantasy pull it up. Oh, damn. He actually said it better than that. Bro. You making it sound nasty. What this he was, said. This he wants was to romantic. make love with that. He wants to make love with that. Yeah, this shit was that. romantic, bro. Bro. That shit you said just now was, like, vulgar and... Peace, Taylor gang. Peace, Enjoy Taylor. your fucking trip with your fake, you know, imaginary friend. Okay? Peace, Taylor gang. All right? All right? Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay, let's see. What did he say? Why isn't this more of a story? He said, I will love men from this life <laughs> to the next. He's, yeah, Pr former President Barack Obama wrote of his own androgynous mind in making love to men daily, but in the imagination, according to the redacted portion of a now notorious 1982 letter obtained by the Post. These bitches ain't shit also. He's not gay though. No, but the fact that this girl let that letter go, mm. like, that's a, that should be like, uh, you should go to jail for that. That should be like sharing nudes. 
Yeah, it's like revenge porn. That's revenge shit. porn. Yeah, yeah. This is actually worse than revenge. Why was it redacted? Now that they have no more use for Brock, they're like, okay, let that letter go. Oh my well, that's god. That's the most man. fucked up thing about this whole thing is they're like, okay, we don't need Barack anymore, so now we'll bury him. No. That's the no, fucked up No, 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 that's not what this is, Sean. Why is it not redacted anymore? No, I'm going to tell you what this is. This is... Oh. Story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole no. world. <laughs> this but is... She looks so, right. This is all bets are off for everybody. Nobody's protected anymore. Ooh. Trump got 91 charges. He got four indictments. Hunter Biden and all his shit coming out. Interesting. Now it's all bets off. It's like, oh, we not protecting each other no more? Mm. There's no presidential oath? Like, uh, like, but why would the Democrats who are in power do it to themselves? Like, why would you tarnish? I don't. Barack did that come Obama's, from? I don't know if that came from Democrats. Did that come from Democrats? I'm assuming the they who's control in control of redacting uh, documents has now all of a sudden unredacted it. Well, like, why? You know what you're doing. If you redacted it for a reason, which they did, why would you remove the redaction at any point in time? Well, I, I could be mistaken, but I think it was his the guy who wrote his biography. So this was something when he was doing his research for the book, he came across this. I thought this was a letter he wrote, though. Yeah, yeah, no. but he was doing his research to write the biography, and yeah. so he saw this. He didn't include it in the book at the time, and so now maybe he's just trying to, you know, get a little steam. I, I think that this is all bets are off. No presidents are protected anymore. This shit is weird. Everybody's shit is on the table. It's weird. You bro. about to hear some shit that you ain't never, ever heard before. And you know what's so interesting about this one? This is an old rumor. This is up there with like Barack Obama's, uh, well, his birth certificate shit. Like we've always heard these rumors about Barack Obama. You never saw those articles about the birth certificate? No, like they've been they were talking about this during his camp first campaign or the second campaign. Oh, oh the Google crazy, it, Google Barack. The craziest rumor right now is. I hate you. you know the craziest I, rumor, I hate right? You. Uh, hold on. Yo, <laughs> look, I'm gonna look at this article. Hold right on, here. Charlotte, man. You know the craziest rumor, right? What? You don't know the craziest rumor? Look, what? That there's no pictures of Michelle Obama pregnant? Oh, that's old. That's old, too. You know about Big Mike? Yeah, that's old. All of these are old. Look, this is 2012. <laughs> What's behind the rights Obama is gay conspiracy? Uh, right. That was 2012. AI, son. Tea Party. Tea Party. AI, son. Tea Party conspiracy claims Obama secretly gay or bisexual. Like, they, all of that, all of these are old. So it's, the Tea Party was right? I mean, listen, I was having a conversation earlier this week, or last week when this shit came out, and I was saying, damn, it seems like a lot of these right-wing conspiracies are starting to come true. But they're not really conspiracies. These are things that clearly somebody I'm saying there's some wild shit coming out. And you about to hear more. You think? Bro, this shit with Hunter Biden is nuts. I All mean, of this shit. We've been known that they've been protecting Hunter Biden the whole time. They're protecting Joe Biden the whole time. Nah, it's over, bro. Protection. Put it like this. There still is going to be media protection. But all of these stories are coming out. You're about to start hearing some really wild shit over the next couple of years. Who do you think is behind us? Who is the most Whoever the powers that be. Not you. Damn. You think they know? You know who the fuck I'm. Who am I? Petey Paul, motherfucker. Who am I? Petey China, motherfucker. They're not me. What do you mean? Remember, I'm not pro China. No, but you are Chinese. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 Even this block of Chinese wins. Look, there's he, a. He definitely got his sneakers from a wet market. You oh, can't even 100%. find that colorway in goddamn America. Yeah, that's right. crazy. You got that from you got that yeah. from the motherland. Chris got a heat on the feet. He bro. does. God he damn. Does. <laughs> he does. Let's do some um oh man for oh oh man. Rest in peace to the god Clarence Avon, man. Man, if y'all know anything about me. Y'all always hear me say I have four inspirations, four idols when it comes to this entertainment thing. It is Petey Green. Rest in peace to Petey Green. It is Arsenio Hall. It is Sean Jay-Z Carter. And it is Clarence motherfucking Avon, man. Mm. Clarence Avon, born in Greensboro, North Carolina, raised in Climax, North Carolina, became one of the most influential people, not just in music, in politics, in film, in sports. If you don't know anything about the... Uh, the Black Godfather, man. You need to go watch his Netflix documentary called The Black Godfather, man. And, you know, it's one of those ones, right, where it's like, I thank God that I had the privilege and honor of sitting down and having a long, long lunch with, with, uh, with Brother Clarence a couple of years ago. Um, 
because it was something that we were supposed to do before COVID, but then COVID hit, and then after COVID hit, and the world opened back up. You know, we um we got to kick it at the the Polo Lounge in L.A., and it was a great great lunch. I'll never forget that day, man. And we had we had a a, 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 a long three four hour conversation, and I, that shit it would have went longer than that if I didn't have to go do fucking Bill Maher that day, but. Yeah, man. There's nobody. Clarence Avon is the all-time leader in assists. Wow. Watch the documentary. And, Put and people in position. The, the all-time leader in assists. Everybody from, like, if you go watch this documentary, you tell me who else can get Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, uh, you know, your favorite celebrities to all be on one documentary talking about the greatness. I know how to get Barack there. Put a f <laughs> you know, you know that. Woo. Oh my God! All poor right, poor man. Barack, man. How they making him go out like this? That's fucked up. I don't think he's going out like nothing. All you, all, all you got to do is not ignore it. Is, is that all? Ignore it. Who? Nobody's going to. Nobody's going to sit with him in an interview and ask him about that letter. I'll ask him. Shit. I'll be like, did you imagine anything today? <laughs> what was your imagination like today? <laughs> All right. Okay. What? Nope. What? What? what what's going on? <laughs> you gonna go surfing and not come back? You think I'm gonna go paddleboard? <laughs> like I'm gonna go paddleboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. You playing? You walk outside. You be like, who the fuck is flying these drones? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? You like what the fuck? All right. Big Zo five oh nine says. If it was a civil war, which side Andrew fighting on? Come on, bro. Y'all already know. <laughs> Y'all already know. The side with the guns, bro. I ain't with these New York pussies. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we ain't got no guns, bro. We need to be oh, with the man. boys. Andrew is fucking crazy. You're saying a civil war oh. now or a civil war back in the day? Now. Oh, now? Is now? The Mm. What y'all fighting for? These pink-haired lesbians, or you want to fight for real America, bro? Yeah, it depends what we fighting. What depends what the civil is? That's exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it, like, they what fight is it the war about? Like, every teacher has to be a drag queen. Yeah, I'm gonna sit that one up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm now. If you say every teacher needs to be paid, you know, seven figures a year, we can go to war for that. We're going to war. I'm going to war for that. Wait, on which side? The teachers. My oh. mom was a public school teacher. Damn, bro. It looks like we'll be fighting figures. against each other in that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, teachers should really be some of the highest paid people. The way the teachers, teachers get treated criminally, Seven bro. Seven figures? Yo, teachers get treated criminally, man. Teachers should be making at least as much as doctors and lawyers, bro. Mm -hmm. At least, man. Like, like, t like the, first of all, not, the not even just the fact that they got to fucking, you know, teach your kids. They got to deal with your little musty-ass children every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally, we drop our kids off for seven, eight hours a day with this one adult. <laughs> I'm a dad of four. You know how stressful that shit is? Yeah. Now, you one teacher, and you got to deal with 20 kids yeah. that and you don't have no tw emotional tw connection to? And you 20 never is best wanted... case scenario. And 20 what, Chris? 20 is best case scenario. 20 is best, exactly. And you never wanted to be there. What do you mean? Like... I would say the vast minority of teachers actually wanted to be teachers. Mm. I think they start off wanting to be teachers. No. Yeah. Nobody starts off wanting to be teachers. They just, they think that they're too educated, too smart to do like a working class job, like be like a plumber or be an electrician. So they Teacher decide. is a working class job. Yeah, but they think that they're too educated to be a plumber, an electrician, or a garbage man. So they're like, I will do this other working class job that has like social credit and appreciation, even though it makes less than those jobs. I think it's a passion you have to have to be a teacher. The great teachers have the passion, yeah, it, it, but the majority to... of them do it because they don't know what they want to do in their life. So they're like, okay, I'll go do this thing that people respect. But then they resent the fact that they're doing this thing that they don't love, they're not interested in, and they're getting paid nothing for. Now, it's I a want, really tricky situation. I, I, think I want the record to show that's a... not a fact. That's right. Andrew's opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what the brilliant this is about. I don't think people think they're necessarily above those other type of jobs. I think, unfortunately, for a lot of people, and it's true, it's a union job that's cushy, and once you get in, you can't be touched. And I think the unions are a large part of the problem. And you know, that might not be popular to say. Listen, but here, here's the reality, of the day, right? You nobody should spend two hundred thousand dollars on a master's degree to make forty thousand dollars a year. I, like, I agree. You have to be to do that. 
But you're, talk, you're, you're not, not talking not about saying, public school teachers. What? You're not talking about. I'm talking about teachers, public school I'm teachers. I'm talking about public school teachers. You're not spending 200 for a master's degree. What does a master's cost? Depends where you go to college. If you go to state school, it doesn't cost 200 grand. What does it cost? What does a master's cost at a SUNY? At least Albany? 75. SUNY Albany. What at least 100. I think it's minimum $100,000. It's a good question. I don't really know. You got to be at least 100. So bare minimum $100,000 to make 40 grand a year. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't like it either. That's why I said to most teachers, man, the teachers that I know, that I, to Andrew's point, there are two types of teachers that I've met. My mother was a public school teacher, plus I know a lot of other teachers. There's people that are very passionate. Super and it's much. the best when you're with them, and they fucking change your life. I've had Absolutely. teachers that changed my literal life, salute to transformed my, it. Yes, salute, I can salute to people like Maggie Olson out there in Milwaukee, salute to people like, uh, you know, uh, Principal Stacy Shells. Like, these are people that I know love the education system. Mr. Davis, Mr. Appel, Mr. Jonas changed yes, my life. Yes, yes. Miss Brevard changed mine and she was a librarian. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, seriously, like, so... I mean, so, look how... You're a fucking writer. You're a New York Times best-selling author. Oh, that's all my mom. Yeah, that's all... I'm that's, just saying, yeah, like, yeah, 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 of course you. you're going to be drawn to those things. So there are these people, but I think the majority of teachers that you go deal with in your life, unfortunately... Don't really want to be there. I think it's the new ones. I, I, I will say the new teachers I've met, uh, and I'm not, this is, this is not the all teachers because I know that y'all love y'all job, but some new teachers I've met really are just like, I'm quitting because I don't make enough money. Yeah, or I like my, that I have my summers off and then I stop going to school at three o'clock. Yes. You know, I, like I get there at eight and I get out at three and I have my whole summers off and I get uh, health insurance and I get benefits and I do all these things and... Yeah, it's it's there's some protection I think which is what Chris is saying, but yeah. clearly we have a flawed system where we're not paying them enough to get the ones that are the most brilliant at teaching, which is an art. Those yes. people may be going to teach elsewhere, do other things, etc. I just don't even want to be in the profession cuz don't, don't make enough money. You can't reward it. But, yeah. but it's only if, about 15 grand to get a master's at, at SUNY system. What the fuck is Sunni system? Muslims? Eight. No. Oh. <laughs> like, why would you... Like, 15 grand. But that's just New York, though. Yeah, that's... No, that's true, but that's just a small city college. That's a college. CUNY or SUNY? SUNY? SUNY, not CUNY. SUNY. Salute to all the teachers out there, though, but man. Most uh, private schools is 100 and up. Yeah, easy. Yeah. I am Travis Rich says, has success drove people away from you that you were close with? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what about you, Shows? Has success driven me away from people that what? No, has success... Where the, oh, has success drove people away from you that you were close with? Has success drove me away from people that... No, I'm, has success drove people away from you that you were close with? No. Lucky bastard. No. That I was like my real friends, yeah, or like people that you're friends in the entertainment, but you're not really friends. You're you're kind of colleagues because you all have like a mutual goal. The beauty of what you got is that your friends realize who you are, what you are, what you do, and they've all rallied around you and put themselves in different position to help this whole enterprise grow which is very rare. There's only a few people I see with it. Salute to LeBron James and his team. You know, the Mavericks and the Rich Pauls of the world. Salute to Kevin Hart and his team. Salute to Jay-Z and his team. I have not seen it any other way, and I would be lying to you if I told you I wasn't envious of that. When a man, especially men, because, you know, I have that kind of team, but it's a lot of the women in my life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But when men can say, that's the guy. Yeah. We don't do what he does. Yeah. But that brother has a talent that can help all of us grow and help this whole enterprise grow. So we go, we gonna rally around that. Man, when you see that, it's it is unbelievable. Unstoppable, I, 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 unstoppable. I envy anybody who has that. Je somebody like Jess Elias, my good sister Jess Elias, I tell her that all the time. She got that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's her sister, you know, Nye, and it's her cousin London, you know, it's her her her, her man Prince, her best friend Prince, you know what I mean? Like, these people, you know, uh, yeah. I love it. I'm I like lucky, I love it. I'm just lucky my friends are talented. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. you could have friends that are not talented, 
and you you want to work with them you want it but it's just not going to work and you're not going to get there but no. i'm just very fortunate that like my friends are brilliant and then so working with them is one very easy they get to thrive they get to be successful and through their success they're helping me achieve the goals that i have i'm incredibly lucky and they're not entitled no you know what i'm saying they're not entitled to anything because i saw this clip that uh it was 50 cent i think he was talking to drama we can actually insert it i saw him talking and he was saying that you pray for success, but you don't pray for the jealousy, the envy, and the oh. entitlement, mm. yeah. <laughs> you know, that comes along with being successful. Yeah. And he was like, yo, you can have your you can have your guy who been your guy forever, and you be, you, you know, you buy him a, a, a house, and he'd be like, well, why you ain't buy me this house? You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, I get it. I totally understand it, man. So, you know. That's the tricky thing, man. That's why it's, it's great when everybody, like, eats what they hunt. Man. Know? I, I think that's the healthiest form. I like, absolutely agree. Because everybody feels incentivized by the success. That's right. And and like and don't try to do what the person you're close to is is doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that's, you know, my first book, I talk about how, you know, I got, to, got a chapter, Fuck Your Dreams, if it's not your dream. Yeah. Because a lot of times we see things working for other people. Yeah. And we like, oh, that's what I should be doing too. Yeah. But the reality is, no, it's not. You got to go figure out what is good for you to be doing hard for people bro it's so so fucking hard you're you're so fucking right because you're gonna spend the rest of your career chasing and you'll never be as great at someone else's dream as you will be at yours and you're not even trying yeah like dig deep in that fucking butthole and try to figure out what's in there for you i'm serious (laughs) man like like what is what does god have planned for you yeah you know what i'm saying and guess what if you do have a, a, a entity around you yeah. that you can look at and be like, man, you know, because of this person, I have proximity to this and I have access to this. And like, you know, if I did start doing this, then it would be kind of easier because we know these X, Y, and Z, these people. Like, figure that out too. Yeah. I don't have, use me. Yeah. I have no problem. Just don't misuse me. You know what I'm saying? But I have no problem being used. If you can't be used, you're useless, man. 100%. You know? Yeah, that chasing success. It's a very tricky thing. Man, I had a thought this morning. Talk to me. Because I'm working on my new book. Uh, and I, I had a thought this morning about how I don't even like the term chasing. Because you don't have to chase what's meant for you. Hmm. You don't have to chase greatness. You don't have, like, none of, none of us have truly chased. Like, you didn't chase wanting to be one of the biggest stand-ups in the world. It was going to happen for you. All you had to do was stay the course. Yeah, work hard. Yeah. Work hard yeah, in, yeah. In, in, in whatever whatever pace you were at. Like, run, yeah. run, running is not going to make you get to that destination any quicker. Bro. Like, there's nothing. You shouldn't have to chase anything that is yours. If I'm yeah. chasing something, I'm trying to catch it because it's fucking trying to get I away. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's almost just like it's like the more authentic you can be in your, like, art or your creation is... Uh, the closer you'll be to achieving those dreams. You know, we had Jelly on Flagrant, and he said a really interesting thing. He's like, uh, you know, I was writing all these songs, but there was like a disconnect, right? And it was like, uh, he has this fun, loving exterior, but deep down, he's really sad. So he tried to write fun, loving songs because that was the exterior. And then he tried to write songs that were sad, but with a fun loving exterior. So he's mm. writing fun songs about sad shit and there was still a disconnect. And then he wrote how he actually felt. And he was pure and honest because a lot of times our personalities are defense mechanisms for what we feel inside. You know what I mean? Like you are an anxious dude, so you develop this amazing sense of humor to calm everything around you, mm-hmm. right? You can control the environment with it. I'm sure it's part of the reason why I've developed a sense of humor, right? It's just like, how do I control what's going on? Mm-hmm. And like, when you get to create authentically, look at how the people gravitated to it. He just threw the video up, go, and there's literally a comment on the video that's seven years old or however many years old it is, and it says, hey, was thinking about, uh, hey, tried a little something different, let me know if you guys like it, maybe put it on the album, question mark? Like, no, the biggest song he ever had. Wow. Right? Wow. And it's, you're right, it's like, I, I think that's one issue I have right now with the social media generation is that, it almost feels like there's a chase for success on views and there's a little bit of a removal from uh, chase, chasing your art or your authentic way of expressing yourself. And 
if views and clout are the thing, they're kind of devoid of art in a way. Yes, because you don't need to, you don't need any talent. You to just do, do it. the wildest. You thing. set yourself on fire. Exactly. I'm gonna set myself on fire. I'm gonna jump out of a building. Yeah. I'm gonna run into a, a store with a bicycle and break the window. And the, it, it, in my experience, I'm always drawn to the artists. And I've seen people who I thought were like really good artists. Like, and by art, I don't mean necessarily painting. It could be music. It could be uh, philosophy. It could be comedy. Whatever. And I've seen them kind of chase the algorithm or chase the success or chase whatever and then kind of leave their art a little bit in that pursuit and um it's it, yeah it's one thing that I, I i hope that they eventually readjust because the people who have careers are always maybe chasing is the right word but are always trying to be pure and authentic in their creations it, it's something Which, I've, it, yeah, it, I've, yeah, it, yeah i'm yeah no the the people who are authentic are just trying to be they're just, they're, because, because, they only know how to express that one thing. That's right. I, you know? Because what you said about Jelly Roll pull is up, what, pull up, yeah. what you said about Jelly Roll is what so many of us creatives go through. Because when you're in this industry, this industry won't let you be. It just won't let you be who you truly want to be yeah. in whatever moment. People trying to make money off you, so they're like, hey, that's do, that, it. do that thing do that, that makes that's us there. money. That's right. Yo, remember when that happened? That yeah. caused you to do this, and that caused that. So we need more of that, and it's like... I ain't dead no more, yo. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you got me chasing something that has ran away from me already. And if you listen to them too much, oh my you end God. up creating inauthentically. And then I've seen people end up doing an impression of themselves where it's just like... It, Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I became a caricature of myself. Interesting. And that shit was corny to me. Shit was funny to us, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, when I was really ignorant, it was slapped harder. Yeah, yeah. No, no, when it was real? When it was real, like, like, like when you watch me talking to, by the way, you'll still get that, right? If I'm talking, st- like, when you see me talking to Magic Johnson. Yeah, yeah. But if, when you first got the information, did you ever say to yourself, it was that nasty bitch from Sacramento who did that? <laughs> well, you, I, I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to ask him that my whole life. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. authentic. Yeah, yeah. Like, the other shit might be funny, but it's like, that ain't real. I can look at myself and be like, boy, I was really, really You're hanging it up. up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's what I be trying to talk to these youngsters about is that, man, the reason there's nothing like inspiring in that space right now is because everybody's doing the same thing and nothing is rooted in who these people really Tell are. Tell them to pursue the art. Just say, hey, pursue your art. Pursue your find, art, Like, man. find a craft and then try to pursue that with the most authenticity you possibly can. And that's gonna be scary, and it's gonna be much harder. Mm -hmm. It is gonna be way harder, because you're probably in uncharted territories, whereas these other things have already been kind of crafted, people have done them, so you go, oh, I can just kind of replicate what they're doing, right? That's, That's not even close to as scary as creating authentically as you are, but one, you owe it to yourself. Two, and two, if you have fans, you owe it to them. You got to keep pushing. That's right. You got to. The albums got to look different. They got to feel different. That's the right. sound got to be different. You got to keep pushing. And the people, if you're pushing authentically, I believe that if they truly fuck with you and they know that you're being pure, they'll fuck with that. People, people, people can see through the bullshit. That's why I say, uh, you know, I, I get it when you're young and you're trying to figure it out. The shit that bothers me when I see. Old motherfuckers doing that shit. Because it's desperation. It's desperation. It's like, bro, you look desperate as fuck. Like, if I don't care who online is telling you that you falling off. I don't care who online tells you they don't fuck with your podcast. You don't let those people dictate your motion or your movement. You can't can't fall off if you're creating authentically. In my personal opinion. That's right. If you're an artist. If you're an artist. If you want to do art, you cannot fall off if you create authentically. Because... There's always going to be somebody that fucks with you. Exactly. Like, I, I think we live in this world because of social media. Everybody wants to have the positive algorithm and they want a whole bunch of people saying how much they love them. That's not how this shit is designed. Mm-mm. This shit is designed for you to go on your phone and for people to tell you how much of a piece of shit you are. <laughs> so the reality of the situation is choose who chooses you. Yep. I choose to fuck with who chooses to fuck with me? Yeah. I don't care. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's a million people or a hundred thousand people. I just know that there's a core group of people who rock with Charlemagne. And the easiest. And thank yeah. you. 
And the easiest way to find that is just by creating authentically. That's it. Because if you put out there in the world that's it. who you are, that's it. And the people that like that, that's it. Are gonna be the people that fuck with you. Yo, every time remember I used to say on the podcast with Brilliant Idiots, the thing I used to hate was when everybody like when, when people started coming into our world. Cause we have cultivated yeah. a space like yeah. brilliant idiot, idiot listeners know each other. Yeah. We we have a conversation when we see each other. It's a yeah. vibe. Yeah. Same thing with Breakfast Club listeners. We yeah. have curated something that isn't for everybody. Yeah. It might have a big mass audience, yeah. but it's not for everybody. And I don't want it to be for everybody. Yeah. It's not supposed to. At all. Because yeah. those are going to be the motherfuckers that ruin the party. Yes. And you'll be like, who invited this person? Yeah. yeah. I don't want that shit, man. Yeah. Good question. What do you guys say to the young creative who, because like now with social media, things kind of change where it's like people can just get famous by being a personality. Like they like they don't, you guys keep stressing, oh, be authentic to your art. But like nowadays, art is so like, the lines I are think, blurred so much. I think much. people are, I think you find out if you're more addicted to attention or addicted to art. And the people that are, are more addicted to attention will do whatever garners attention. Mm -hmm. And the people that are addicted to their art, whatever it is, dude, if it's editing videos, if it's singing, if it's comedy, it doesn't matter what it is. The people that are addicted to that are always going to try to push that, change it, do something more pure, more authentic, do something they've never done before, like put themselves in a scary position, try to find out what they're really truly motivated by at that time in their life and express it. And the people that are just addicted to the attention, oftentimes might be great at the art, but what they will easily do is gravitate away from that art and then do more and more of the attention-seeking things. Yeah, Andrew is absolutely right, man. And you said something and we all else. want attention too, don't get me wrong. I just think that if, if you care about the art, you want the attention for the for art. For the art, and that's what Alex- like, I get so happy, that's right. sorry, like there'll be moments that we've had over the years, years and years of clips coming out where like it will be this it will be this like perfect lob, set up, yeah. punchline, dunk. And it's like, that's a decade of podcasting together to the point where you even know where your friend is right. going. To me, that's art. You're, it's like playing basketball. It's mm. like, I know you're gonna cut to the that's lane. Right. You don't even gotta look at me. Dime. Mm. That's right. And to me, I, when we post that and then people love it, that's the most satisfying. Even when they pull up old clips and the old clips, I got Cheryl Underwood sent me a clip, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I replied to Cheryl, this is my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is me and Andrew show. What are you talking? Because Cheryl always sends me clips via DM. Like, shit, she'd be laughing at. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, this is us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Soldier Boy thing? That, you Remember, know like, that was like a three-minute or five-minute bit that we just fucking hit, 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 hit. And it wasn't, and the funny part is the clip wasn't even, oh, it was funny, but it was actual thought-provoking, like, which most brilliant idiot stuff is. And she hit me, she's like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, it's you talking about why you think the word African American is oppressive? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, Cheryl, yeah. this is our, this is this is what we do every podcast. Yeah, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. You know, but to Al what Alex was saying, Alex said that people want to be famous. That's the problem. Mm. If that's your mindset, if your mindset is I want to be famous, I want to get views, you know, I want to go viral. That's not that's not an artist mindset. Yeah, that's not what an artist and, is thinking. And about. don't get me wrong, we all want success, and we all we all want those things that happen to our art. And don't get me wrong, we're, we've all done fucking shows that we were like, this is an art. Like we've done some shit back in the day on MTV where it's like, this is an art. Like Ugh. you try to be as artistic as you can maybe in it, but you also want success, you want fame. So I relate to those things. But once you get into a position, you know, that we're in, where like we have the choice. Yo, you don't gotta write a book. Do you know what I, I mean? Like, I like writing books. But, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. You know it. what I mean? Like you're oh, yeah. choosing to do that with yeah. your time. Like, But you see, key word, it's like you say, once you're in the position that you're in. 100%. So it's like a lot of these younger people, and famous was probably the wrong choice of words. It's more like, hey, as a creative, they want to make a living being a creative. Yep. And so they're all just trying to find or make their way. And so it's like, that's why I feel like I agree I with everything you guys are saying, though. but it's like, it's I never difficult. sacrificed my stand-up. Like, I, I never once was like, and that's why I was never on TV for stand-up early on, because they were like, you can't say these things on fucking television, mm. right? But I ne that was the thing that I was like, I'm going to do this in the most pure way I want to yeah. do it, because that is, that is my baby, that is my art. And then finding, doing other things, doing MTV shows, doing podcasts, right, where I f end up fi falling in love with podcasting, but even doing MTV shows where I was like, this ain't my art, but I'm going to try to do it as close to, uh, as authentic as I can. Mm -hmm 
even though there's going to be limitations on it. And I have to be okay with that because I also want success. I also want a family that I can provide for. Like I think we were just young, too. Yeah, when you know you're young, you're not we're thinking about We're young and we're... And, and, I, and listen, you should take advantage of all opportunities that but come we would your way. But we would fight for, like, things absolutely. that we thought were creative. Absolutely, absolutely. But I just think we were young and we were taking advantage of opportunities and we were listening to people who did have our best interests. Yeah, yeah. You can't act like a lot of those A lot of those executives at MTV had a lot of our best interests at they heart. Did. And and they did, and it worked out. And it, they, it did. It worked out. We had, we've had some great TV careers, you know what I mean? Um, the only thing I would say is that when it comes to media... Everybody literally is doing the same thing. And I think that there's so many different uh, realms of, of, of just the media game people could be into. Like, I give credit to people who can get on YouTube and not just be the talent, be the producer, be the editor, be the writer. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, they do all of these things, right? But yeah. you might be better at producing than being a talent. You might be better at writing than being a talent. You might be better at editing than being a talent, but you'll never know that because you're too busy trying to be a talent. I, I listen to a lot of different voices because I do know that the next generation of even radio superstar is probably going to be somebody from the podcast world, mm. somebody from the YouTube space. YouTube yeah. space. But I'm telling y'all right now, just like I can listen to a lot of radio talent and be like, Jesus Christ, man, it's not a lot of good radio talent out here. It's not a lot of good talent on, in those spaces either. I don't give a fuck how much you do your show every week. You know what's crazy? I don't give a fuck how much you talk. They might be talented. They're just trying to be something they're that not. They're not. So you don't even know. It's like, have you ever seen a diamond before it's cut up and looks nice? Yeah. That's what they are. Yeah. So it's just like, yo, you're yeah. not even giving yourself the opportunity yeah. to cut yourself up and look beautiful. There, like, there, there, there's, 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 like, there's like a couple of people I see that I'm like, yo, that person got something. Mm. You know what I mean? Whether it's their voice, whether it's their POV. I know some people who got the voice and the POV. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna never fuck with you because you talk too much shit about me. But yeah. the reality, no, I'm just playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing. But I do pay attention. But that I can look at some people and be like, all that person needs is the right opportunity and the right coach. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they and they and they out of here. Hmm. You know? Um find your art. Yeah. Pursue it as much as you can. Uh, there's going to be limitations earlier in your career, and you have to accept those. And then as you get more successful, be more authentic with your art. But if you have an art, I'm telling you, it's going to be so much more fruitful. Your life is going to be so much more fruitful. Because you see these dudes that, like, they just chase attention, and then they get all the attention, and they're still miserable. Yeah. They get all the attention, and they're like, okay, well, now I guess I need all the money. Like, And then it's just this never-ending game to try to fill themselves because they don't got an art to fill themselves. There's nothing better nothing. than putting time That's right. into something you're proud of That's right. and then people appreciating it. That's right. Oh, you know somebody, I hope everybody can experience that I, once I agree. in their life, bro. I agree. Oh, you know somebody, I, I, wanna, I do want to salute somebody. Um, I want to salute a podcast that I've been enjoying. And it is the uh, the Need to Know podcast. Need to Know. The Need to Know podcast. I just pulled them up. It is Savon, Alex, and Reggie. I like what y'all fucking do. Let me see. I like the chemistry. I like, you know, the things y'all talk about, the things y'all discuss. I enjoy listening to y'all. I really do. S Savon, Alex, and Reggie. Three youngins called the Need to Know podcast. Salute to, salute to them. And no, they're not on the black effect for all you cocksuckers who think, <laughs> who, who think I only uh, big up black effect podcast. But nah, say, Savon, Alex, and Reggie, the Need to Know podcast. I fuck with y'all. Shout out to you guys, Yeah, man. keep doing it. Don't let me down. The Need to that's Know podcast. That's why I don't podcast. be wanting to That's why I, be, I like to shout people out. It's, but I, It's the Need to Know podcast. Yes, the Need to, to Know podcast. Not to be confused with Need to Know. What I said. Because Need to Know is... Two old white guys. No, 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 no. It's this the Need to Know the Podcast. The Need to Know Podcast. Yeah, Savon, Alex, and Reggie. I like I like what y'all do. I like the chemistry that y'all have. And Reggie is, he's in radio. I don't know what he does in radio. I, I just I just hear him talk about he's in the radio space. Mm. And uh, Savon was a producer. Um, he was on Joe show, right? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know I've, I've met him. I've definitely met him before. And Reggie, I don't know her background. But I just, I like that. Y'all should stay together. Y'all should stay together as a unit, and y'all should continue to grow um, what, it, what, what, what it is that y'all are doing. There, there, there's definitely something uh, there That's with dumb. the Need to Know podcast. I, I do. I, I, I really feel that way. 
Um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>